Иван, горит! Не ори, Иван, тихо. Ножки, Но, постав... а остановись себе справа. Сейчас, вот сейчас, сейчас, сейчас. Вы чё? Ох, Ленинская. Блин, Блин как... Это что такое? Confiscated Russian assets will allow Ukraine to finance war until 2028. Ukraine has received a vital military assistance of $61 billion from the United States. However, Kyiv still needs a medium-term financing plan to withstand pressure from Russia, according to Reuters. The central element of the financing plan should be the mobilization of frozen assets of the Moscow Central Bank to compensate for the war damages. Reuters suggests that the American aid package will provide Ukraine with weapons and ammunition until approximately the end of 2025. Therefore, during this period, Ukraine may once again run out of arms. Even if Joe Biden is re-elected as US president this November, he may struggle to get more money out of Congress. And if Donald Trump returns to the White House, American support for Ukraine will be even more precarious, given the Republican candidate's previous lack of commitment to Kyiv's defense, the article states. A multi-year financing plan for Ukraine would have several advantages. First and foremost, it would provide some insurance against political fluctuations in the United States. It would also bolster the morale of Ukrainians and give Western arms manufacturers more confidence in expanding production. The main way to get much more money for Ukraine is to mobilize Russian assets frozen by Western countries at the beginning of the war, amounting to approximately $320 billion. If the countries guaranteed interest from the assets for a decade, they might raise 30 to 40 billion euros. While this will help, it will not be a game changer because it will fund Ukraine for less than half a year, the report says. It is emphasized that if Ukraine receives $320 billion, it will be a completely different matter. That would finance the war until at least the end of 2028. If the belligerence ended or froze the conflict before then, Ukraine could use some of the money to rebuild its economy, which the World Bank estimates will cost $486 billion, the material says. Since the start of the full-scale war in Ukraine, Western countries have frozen over $300 billion of Russian assets. So far, they have not been able to confiscate them due to legal and reputational risks. In this regard, the United States and G7 countries are considering several options. Transferring the proceeds from Russian assets to Ukraine to buy weapons, transferring Russian assets to Ukraine as compensation for Russia's invasion, using frozen Russian assets as collateral for loans to Ukraine. Vice President of the European Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, stated that $300 billion in frozen Russian assets could be used as collateral for lending to Ukraine. Earlier, Reuters reported that the group of seven countries are considering discussing the idea proposed by the United States to confiscate proceeds from Russian assets at the summit scheduled for June. After arrest of Russian Deputy Defense Minister, Putin fears Shoigu's faction. The arrest of Russian Deputy Defense Minister Timur Ivanov on suspicion of corruption deals a serious blow to his longtime mentor, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, at a time when much of the country's political elite expects inevitable reshuffles. According to the Financial Times, it is expected that President Vladimir Putin, after re-election for a new term, will submit for approval a new composition of the Cabinet of Ministers, which will provoke a behind-the-scenes struggle for power. Against the background of this struggle, at first it seemed that Shoigu's team was on the rise, which was facilitated by Russia's recent offensives in Ukraine and the death of field commander Yevgeny Prigozhin, who was the most ardent critic and rival of Shoigu. But the arrest of Ivanov, the highest-ranking official detained since 2016, marked a shift in Shoigu's fate, especially given the very noticeable way the deputy minister was brought to court. 
Putin esteems loyalty above all else. Shoigu has so far survived in his role despite setbacks in the first weeks of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, as well as the fact that the three-day special military operation has now dragged on into its third year. The Minister of Defense also withstood fierce criticism from the head of the Wagner private military company Yevgeny Prigozhin, who last year attempted a rebellion against Shoigu and other military leaders, the newspaper notes. But Putin, who is known to fear that any faction in his elite will gain too much power, seems to have concluded that the Kremlin needs to find a new way to balance Shoigu's center of power and the defense ministry, now that Prigozhin no longer plays that role, writes the Wall Street Journal citing one Moscow official. Ivanov's extravagant lifestyle, clearly beyond his official capabilities, made him an easy target. Putin doesn't really care about corruption. He needs a certain amount to make it happen. But there is a limit, one of the sources noted. Inevitably, in a clique where power is mostly distributed through patronage, people are sometimes on the wrong side of someone's anger said General James Hockenhall, head of the British Army's Strategic Command. As the war drags on, this cabal that seeks power and money is under increasing pressure, and sometimes someone is chosen to take the blame for what is happening.